Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM theory grades. We're making good headway now through this grade three theory. So if you want to grab your music theory and practice workbook for grade three, we'll be cracking on with that. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets that are available in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. All the information that you need to know will be incorporated in these sheets. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books that I have available there. So if you want to go to SharonBill.com it's all there for you. If it is that you're working towards your ABRSM theory exam, I've written a book How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually sitting in the exam room taking the paper. So that's there to help you too. If you can give me a like, that'd be fab. And subscribe to my channel, that way you'll keep updated. And so we're going to press on with book three, grade three. And if you turn to page nine, we're just looking at beyond two ledger lines. So I'm going to refer to this as section C. And that way you know to turn in your PDF booklet to section C. And that's all the information that you'll need to know to understand this next section. So we're looking at beyond two ledger lines. In actual fact, there's nothing new here than you've covered in grade two. It's just now we're progressing that and extending beyond two ledger lines. And so I'll just remind you how to easily work out the notes because we're heading outside into unfamiliar territory either above or below the stave in both clefs. So there's two ways that you can approach this. You can either begin with a note that you're familiar with. So this top line here we know is F, every good boy does his football F, and count up from there, line space, line space, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. You can work it out that way, starting from a familiar note, or you can count down an octave, remembering to count the given note as one, and always counting line space, line space, and count eight notes down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So therefore you know it's an E, but an octave higher. And so perhaps you'd like to press pause, have a go at these on your own, and then re-access into the video and I'll work through those with you just to double check your answers. It doesn't matter if you've made a mistake, you're only ever writing in pencil. So you can always erase and have another go. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go at this yourself. And so I'll just go over these answers and you can double check them. So we can either think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight takes you to an A, or you can count backwards knowing that this bottom line is G, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. So we know that that's an A, an octave lower than this one on the bottom space. Let's carry on, we're still in bass clef, so let's count down eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five, seven, eight, yeah, there we go, double check that, that's a G. Here we have a treble clef, so one, three, five, seven, eight gives us an F. I just found it easier counting one, three, five, just line, line, line. So let's have a look at this next one. One, three, five, seven, eight. Takes us to G, an octave lower. And let's carry on. One, three, five, seven, eight. Takes us to a G, but we're an octave higher. Remember to swap clefs. Be careful with your clefs. One, three, five, seven, eight. Gives us an A. And then one, three, five, seven, eight gives us an F. There we go, that's that. Now in exercise two, let's move on. We've done this before, however, you're gonna have a few more ledger lines to deal with. We need to swap clef whilst remaining at exactly the same pitch. And the clue is always to revert back to middle C. Keep using middle C as your anchor point 
So here we're starting on the C B A G below middle C. So C B A G below middle C. That's the way of preventing starting either an octave too high or an octave too low. We want to remain at exactly the same pitch. And then you can either work it out by counting intervals. So one, two, three, four. Or you can just work out the letter names or maybe just work in steps. Have a go at the next one or the next few if you feel confident enough to progress through all of this exercise too. Have a go on your own. Remember, set out your music first so you're not going to run out of space. Do all the things that don't need thinking about first. So we know we're going to go into clef. So let's just think about changing the key signature into treble clef. So we want B, E, A, D. There's our, so we've done all the nuts and bolts and now you're free to just think about what's required. Have a little go, press pause and then re-access into the video and I'll work through those with you. So I'm hoping you've had a little go of this yourself. Here's our starting point which is actually middle C so we need to make sure we start on middle C otherwise we'll be an octave or two out. Now we're going to go down a step and now we've actually gone from line to line. So we've gone up one, two, three. So we've gone from C, one, two, three. Or alternatively, we've gone four up from the next note. Down a step. Down a step. And that should bring us back to middle C, which it does do. So we know we've not gone wrong. Now we're going from line to line. So we're going up three from line to line. And then here... We're going one, three, five, six from C. So one, three, five, six. There we go. So we've gone really high up now. And that's why we change clefts so we don't need to use so many ledger lines. So now we can go up next door, up a step. And then we're going back to this point here. And let's just double check we've not gone wrong. So we've gone one, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. We know we're in the right place then. So you've always got to be careful counting line, space, line. That's all the thinking done. Now, of course, we've got to reverse the stems because these are now low in the clef, below that middle line. And so the stems point upwards. Stem still pointing upwards. We're still only on the middle line, and so we don't need to change the direction of the stems. There we go. Let's have a go at the next one. So let's just get all of our bar lines in place. There we go. Etc. That's what they put. So we go from treble to bass. We've got two sharps, so we need an F sharp and a C sharp, we're in common time, if you remember that was first discussed in grade one, that's four crotchet beats or four quarter notes per bar, it's like saying four four. Okay, we can do the rest straight off, no need to think about those. Okay, so here is our middle C, and we've actually gone one, two, three below middle C, so one, two, three takes us there, C, B, A, C, B, A, there we go. Now we're going above middle C, C, D, E, F. So C, D, E, F. There we go. Tie. So we've got the same note again. Down a step. Down a step. And then we're going down one, two, three. So we're going the other side of middle C. So we don't need a ledger line anymore. That's the C, B below middle C. Back to the D above middle C. Now C, B, A takes us back. And just to make sure we've not gone wrong, let's count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We know we've gone line, space, line, space, and so on. Now we've gone back above middle C to the D above middle C. Up a step. So this time we're going from not requiring ledger lines to requiring quite a lot of ledger lines. So there's the E, upper step is F, and then from space to space, F, G, A, we need another ledger line. 
So you have to just keep adding ledger lines as you need them back to the F, D, and then E. There we go. So we need lots of ledger lines for that one. Tie. Stems are now going to be pointing the other way down because we've gone very high up in the clef. We are above that middle line. And as the notes go up, you can see that the stems correspond, so it's easy to tell where we're going. There we go. Okay, last one. Just get all the lines in place. Okay, so we've got one sharp, we've got an F sharp, so in the treble clef that will be the top line. There's our time signature. Okay, so we're quite a way down. We started middle C is our anchor point. We've got C, B, A, G, F below middle C. So C, B, A, G, F below middle C. We need lots of ledger lines. We need three ledger lines there. Use a ruler if you're not sure. Okay, down a step means we still need three ledger lines, but we're on the space below that with a sharp. Back to the note we started with next door, so we're back on the line. Tie, so we need to do that again. Up a step, so this time we need less ledger lines. One two because now we're on the space above we can sharpen that so here is one above that and if let's just double check where we are we want c b a c b a so we know we've not gone wrong yet let's so just keep track of where you're going next door note down takes us to this space sharpen that same note again but this time we naturally, that natural isn't really necessary, but they've put it, so we'll do the same. Because we're just copying. This should look exactly the same and sound exactly the same, but be in a different clef. So we just need to make sure our dots are in place. Pop the stems in. Make sure the stems kind of correspond with the direction and pitch of the notes. There we go. And that's that, it's as simple as that. I hope that's been helpful to you. If you can give me a like, that would be fab, that would be encouraging to me. Uh, subscribe to my channel, I hope you're enjoying this. I'm really enjoying working through this series with you, I do hope that you are. Subscribe to my channel to keep updated and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching, bye!